So we often think of racism as either the state, state racism or structural racism or et cetera. And so the Cronulla riot brought out the question, what is the role of the mob? How do you theorize and think about the impact of the racist mob uh, in history? Which, which is a very particular thing. Uh, um, like in, uh, I know I, yeah, sort of like going a bit uh, academic technical here, but in uh, a lot of Foucaultian literature, uh, influenced by Foucault, uh, working on governmentality, you always have this idea that there's the government and there's the people, and the government governs technically. But what does it mean, for instance, to govern through the mob? What does it mean to mobilize the mob to do the work for you? Now, that, this takes us, of course, to the history of fascism, uh, the, how, how uh, mobs do political work. And so uh, how and when does a state either makes a mob kill or lets a mob kill, or in the Australian uh, situation, maybe it didn't let the mob kill, but it let the mob do violence. Or uh, some might say it made it engage in violence. And so this relationship with, between the state and the mobilization of the mob is interesting because, and, and I'm sure some of you will, uh, will say, but it only happened once. And what's interesting is precisely the fact that it only needs to happen once for internalizing the consciousness that the mob might get you. And this is the idea of a racist war here. You know, in, in classic, classic uh, games of deterrence, you always, you don't want to deploy your nuclear forces. <laughs> You just want to keep them in the background and say, I've got them. I've got them. Watch out. And uh, the mob plays this function. The mob says, we've shown you that we can deploy the mob on you in Cronulla. So bloody watch out. 